Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.1 and Heat Blur Simulations AGS 37 Begin Module. Welcome to Tutorial 7, RB75 Maverick Missile. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the Swedish variant of the AGM-65 Maverick missile, which in Swedish service is designated RB-75. RB standing for a robot, uh, which is what the Swedes call missiles. Uh, this is a robot. Uh, so uh, there are three versions of this missile available in DCS. Uh, two of them are real, one of them is fictional. Uh, there is the RB-75A, which is the, it's basically exactly the same as the Maverick AGM-65A. It's an electro-optical TV guided missile with a 57 kilogram warhead. In Swedish service it was used for air-to-ground attacks but also anti-shipping. We then also have the RB-75B which is a fictional version of the missile which has a zoomed-in uh, seeker to make it easier to spot targets in DCS. Because I have to say, with the EP-13 sight that we have in the Vigan, it's really hard to spot targets. It's a very, very small sight. So this is a kind of gamification. It's identical to the RB-75A in every way, except it has this zoomed-in seeker view. Uh, this is not a real missile, however. Never existed in the real world. Uh, and lastly, we have the RB-75T, which is a real missile, uh, and this is Again, basically exactly the same as the AGM-65A, however it has a Swedish-made warhead. They swapped out the warheads from the standard ones, uh, and it, so it now has a 142 kilogram warhead, and this version of the missile is only intended for anti-shipping. So the, the standard versions, you know, the RB-75A and B, uh, they have shaped charge 57 kilo warheads, which are suitable for air-to-ground and anti-shipping, and the T model, the Tango model, it's an explosive warhead, so the entire warhead is just a bomb, <laughs> and it's 142 kilos, and it's intended for anti-shipping. You can carry these weapons on pylons 2, 3, 5, and 6, as I've demonstrated here, and uh, I'm today carrying uh, A models on the inner pylons on 2 and 5, and I'm carrying B models on the outer pylons um, sorry, that would have been 3 and 5 for the A, and 2 and 6 for the B models, so I can demonstrate the difference in spotting between these. So let's uh, jump into the cockpit here, and uh, I'm set up with almost exactly the same targets as we had in the rockets tutorial. Difference today is that instead of those trucks, we have two T-72 B-3 tanks that we're going to destroy using these missiles. Setup for the missile is extremely simple. Uh, we go to the weapon selector and we flip it to position RB75. <laughs> That's the, the only setting we really have to make. Um, as always, we're going to want the QFE set. So uh, in B3, QFE is 1013. That is already set, so we're good to go there. Uh, we're going to want the radar altimeter set, which we already do. And we're going to want slave mode to F uh, for low level attack. So, uh, next thing we'll do is put the aircraft into attack mode. We'll flip master selector to attack, and you'll notice that as soon as we do that, the sight actually comes to life. So this is the EP-13 sight. Uh, it's currently bore sighted, so the missile is looking exactly, or approximately, where this dot is. This dot is actually incorrect because triangulation hasn't begun. We need to nose down more than five degrees, then the dot will move to the correct location. We have adjustments for the EP-13 site located down here. You can see EP-13. We have Contrast and Lusstirka. I can't even pronounce that. Lusstirka. Um, so yeah, the contrast and brightness, <laughs> basically. Uh, you can adjust the site if you like. Uh, actually, if I zoom out a little bit just now, let's see. Need adjustment from where it is just now? I'll maybe darken it a little bit. Um, after that, selection of the missile is automatic. Um, we simply place the aiming dot on the target and flip up the safety. As soon as we flip up the safety, the missile is armed and ready to fire. And then we simply use the radar control stick in order to steer the missile. Now, the radar control stick has a trigger on the front. This is used to control the missile as well. So you can see I can move the stick here. And on the front of this uh, radar stick, 
there is a, a two-position trigger. So when the trigger is completely released, the missile is bore sighted. If I click the trigger down into the first detent, which is labeled T1, I can now slew the missile. You can see that uh, the missile is now slewing around. If I release the first detent and go back to T0, the missile will immediately rebore sight. It's hard to see there, but it did move back to its bore sighted position. And then if I push the trigger all the way down to the second detent, which is labeled TV, that commands the missile to lock. And just like in Western aircraft, you'll know that it's locked uh, when there's a small gap in the middle of the crosshairs. So I'm currently using one of the A missiles. Uh, you can actually flip through which missile you have selected by cycling the trigger safe and unsafe uh, a number of times. Uh, alternatively, you have a button again on the side wall here, um, which is labeled Framsting. And if you press that, it will also uh, reject the current missile and select the next one. So uh, I'm going to begin my attack now, and hopefully we'll, I'll be able to demonstrate the difference between the uh, different versions of the missile. I would also recommend make, making use of the attitude hold autopilot while you're flying an attack with the Maverick, because you'll be concentrating on steering the missile, of course, and all the while um, <laughs> you have to also fly the plane. So target area is over here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and select B3 here, which is actually M3 and we'll continue inbound. And as always in attack mode, we have a little circle there showing us the target position. That circle will disappear when we unsafe the trigger. So we'll continue inbound for now. Uh, normally you're gonna start trying to spot your target at 15 kilometers. Uh, we're currently at 40, so we'll have to continue inbound just a little bit just now. Uh, you'll rejoin me once I'm a bit closer to the target. Okay, you rejoined me. We're just about at the target area now. Uh, I had the attitude hold on there for just a moment. I'm going to pop up a little bit and then bring the target dot down towards the target. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to unsafe the trigger and I'm going to enter active pause. Uh, so we can kind of take our time here. Uh, I would normally also put the attitude hold mode on on the autopilot here. You also have the option of doing the uh, altitude hold if you would like. So I'm going to look kind of centered down on the site here. As you can see, very, very difficult to pick out targets. However, that's one of the tanks there and that's another one there. I just happen to know that. If I pull my uh, radar trigger to the T1 position, I can now slew. I can slew around. And if I do a full depress of the trigger there, you can see I just managed to lock that tank. That's us managing to lock it quite a long range. Um, if I then depress the trigger again to T1 and then release, it will rebore sight. So that's a way of dealing with that. If I then safe the trigger and unsafe, safe the trigger, unsafe, safe the trigger, unsafe. Yeah, that actually only cycles the missiles in the event that we fired one. So I think we actually need to make use of uh, the next missile from staying button. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get one of the ones with the higher um, zoom level. So I hit it a couple of times there. And no, it doesn't seem to be actually giving us uh, one of the ones that uh, has the higher zoom. Do I have to maybe have it in unsafe? Yeah, so it would seem that that will only function after you've actually fired a missile. So we have to fire the first two before it's going to give us one of the ones with the, the higher zoom. So in any case, let's do that. I'm at T1. I am slaving over the target. Full depress, and we now have a lock indicated by the gap in the middle. Also note that the radar control allows us to change the polarity. So we have A0, A1, and A2 positions, which would normally control the radar. When you have the RB75 selected, uh, you can select A0 for black on white, which is what we have now. You can flip it to A1 for white on black, and you can flip it to A2 for automatic. So, wait, sorry, I had that wrong there. Uh, A0, A1, A2. Yeah, okay, so that's us, we're flipping the polarities there. It also changes the polarity of the, the symbology as well. So I'm going to leave it uh, on the, the normal white on black mode. Uh, we can now press the uh, weapons release button, and that missile is away. 
Funny thing, um, as the, the missile models have now moved to using the Eagle Dynamics ones, on the aircraft they show Swedish models, RB-75. As soon as I fire them, they say US Air Force, uh, because we are now using the uh, Eagle Dynamics models. Let's see if we get a hit here. It's a little bit weird because I, I fired this missile in active pause, so the aircraft in effect wasn't moving. That, uh, that disadvantages the missile in range a little bit. Uh, but it should be able to hit a target at about 15 kilometers. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Hit. Okay, that was super effective. So uh, I can now leave, I can either leave the trigger unsafe uh, and press the Framstein button, or I can cycle the trigger. Uh, safe and then unsafe and I now get the next missile. I'm going to quickly fire this one off but not at the other tank because I want to uh, demonstrate the zoomed in ones. So, oh, rifle. That one's away, that's just a, a nonsense one and this time let's test the function of the uh, the next missile button here. And it in fact doesn't work. It says in the manual that that would work but it, it does not. Okay, so Safe, unsafe, and then we get the next missile. Uh, and this should now be a B model, uh, and this should actually make it easier to spot targets, but I have to say, I cannot see any difference in that. So, uh, depressing the trigger to T1 again. I'm going to move... Well, actually, no, it is a little bit. Actually, I think it was the B models I had first. This is an A model now. This is slightly zoomed out. We can see that impact there. So that's the impact of the other missile. So, actually, I'm going to continue inbound this time. Oops, to the point at which I would actually be able to see the target for real with the with the real RB75A models. Build the press. We got a lock. Fire the missile. And let's see if that's actually going to give us a hit. So you can see with the actual, the real life RB75A models, uh, the the field of view in the zoom is, is very, very bad. It's actually a really difficult to spot a target. I was using the easy mode ones before, which are indeed fictional. Boom! Oh, he was actually firing at us. And <laughs> we've crashed into the water. Okay, fantastic. That went really very well. <laughs> okay, so that is a demonstration of the RB-75 Maverick missile. Don't do what I did and fly into the ground when you're trying to make use of them. So, uh, a, a quick uh, reminder, we have the RB-75A, which is a standard A-model Maverick with a 57 kilo warhead intended for air-to-ground and anti-ship uh, warfare. Uh, RB-75B uh, is also an A-model Maverick, uh, but with a fictional zoomed-in seeker. You then have the 75T model, which is, again, actually a Maverick A-model, uh, but with a, a Swedish-manufactured larger explosive warhead. 142 kilos, and that one is purely intended for anti-ship. And really the only things that you have to do are set your weapon selector to RB-75 and away you go. The weapon will function in attack mode uh, for a planned attack, but you can also employ it in navigational mode as well. With the RB-75 selected and you're in nav mode, simply flip up the trigger safety and the EP-13 sight will come alive immediately. And then you're using the, the radar stick and its trigger Remember that trigger completely released is bore sight for the missile. Trigger depressed to the first detent allows you to slew. And trigger depressed all the way down to the second detent will lock the missile. If you get a successful lock, you can simply press weapons release at that time. So, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hack's ground crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on the screen now. There's some small benefits, such as being part of the Deep Hack's ground crew Discord, and occasionally we do flights together as well. So uh, please consider doing that uh, if you would like to. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.